everyone, once again, it is Friday. It is episode 41 of our little live show uh, experiment that I think has been going pretty well because I enjoy uh, every Friday I wake up and say, ooh, we get to do another one of these. And, um, you know, we got a nice little show for you. See, I got some balsa behind me, balsa on the table from what you saw last. I want to say hello. I saw Vic. I see Spencer Keith. I see uh, Ken Sprouse. Um, David yourself, Chris Blackburn, Dad's RC, John VHRC, and everybody. Um, thank you as always for joining us. So I still see Spencer Keith saying he's still not buying the video. We're going to talk about that video because when I saw it on Monday, he actually emailed it to our customer service like as a ticket. When I saw it, I'm just like, this is amazing. Now, I don't believe the video to be faked in any way. And we can talk about that because Alex is good in the after effects and CGI-ness of things. But uh, we could talk about that camera he used. And we'll do that when we get to the uh, YouTube section on there. But Either way, I think, if anything, the harder thing for me to grasp is how the range, more than if it was an actual venom flying down a mountain. That, I believe, is the way it goes. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. And Stu911, I shared that video out. That guy's channel is eight years old. He had like 360 followers when I saw that video. Shared it on the Motion site. Now he's almost doubled that in subscribers. And a video like that is tremendous. Um... You know, I, I I hope he does more. I'll I'll ride that mountain Maybe. down with yeah. all sorts of aircraft if he wants to. That is really, 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 really awesome. Yeah, John VHRC. That's what I'm thinking there uh, as well. Long range FPV, and uh, but the way that 360 camera works is uh, part of you know the the beauty of it because the we magic. are the magic. I mean, the magic is in the background with that. And we'll talk about it uh, a little later on. But what do we got? So this week, uh, this week we had some fun. Obviously, it's been crazy. We've been going. We went boating one day. Then we went to the flying field the next day. We were starting to play with those cars that I unboxed last week. And it's just like, it's it's crazy. I was, you know, in between that, I'm trying to build, you know, this uh, P47. So it's just so much happening that is um, absolutely crazy. Uh, it's just, you know, you get thrown all different directions. One day you got to be a sailor, next time a race car driver, next time, <laughs> you know, a, a pilot. And it's fun. It's really, really, really fun. Um, the boat behind me, somebody just asked real quick, Art is above me. Uh, this one, I think you're thinking, that's the quick fire. Um, talking about the swordfish. That's the swordfish is uh, one of our, these are our new Bancroft line of boats. So that swordfish racing boat, we got it in red here as well. We got two little ones. All these videos are coming. Uh, we got a jet power one, quick fire sailboat, and then the other one, um, the sport sail. So I only got those. I haven't gotten a warship yet, so I can't wait. One of these shows, I'll be unboxing one of those. And uh, But that's neither here nor there. I say, let's get started. So we went out. Obviously, balsa has been on my mind. Um, after flying that zero round, just so much fun. Building this one. I'd only done the Nexa Tiger Moth a little bit a while ago. Um, and I saw that I still had the OV-10 when we had released that a year and a half ago. It came out under a brand like ProFly, but now we switched it over to Nexa. We decided Nexa was going to be, you know, all the planes that we, uh, you know, under our brand Nexa. So it's just been rebranded, but it's the exact same plane. Nothing changed about it. So I just got to go change like the thumbnails on the old YouTube videos. But I looked at it and I said, I haven't flown it in a while. And... That was the first big balsa plane I ever flew. So I babied the heck out of that in those original videos just because I didn't know any better. I was so afraid, I guess, of it. And we were at Null in the fall, I believe. But Wesley Miller was there, uh, Mary Boozer. He was flying it with me. So I went out to CCRC with it the other day. And <laughs> I, I took it out. I just plugged it in. I did my pre-flight check. Everything was good. I do my maiden. Alex was watching. We didn't film my, you know, my re-maiden, if you will. Landed it. Perfect. All right, get the cameras rolling. We're going to film a, a quick reflight review. Um, and then this is what we're going to show you of what happened. So uh, enjoy, and we'll see you back in the studio in a couple minutes. All right, Alex, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I've got 50 flat, and uh, I am ready to go with the Nexa OV10 Bronco. Here we go. Take it off right to left. Bring it up. Get your tracking right. Again, I'm at 50 flat. Gear coming up. Oh. What was I that? I think that was one of my antennas. Oh no. I think that was one of my antennas. It's okay. 
I don't think we need it. We'll check it as we come by. So we'll come by with a slow path. So it's been a while. I just had glued that back in. But there's two little aerials that are on top of your booms. So I believe it's one of those. That may have went off. But either way, look at her. She flies fantastic. So guys, in the description of this video, if you're watching this right now, again, we have links to all the electronics used in this. This was set up with Admiral Motors. I believe they're the GP20s, two of them. Again, I got two ESCs. We're running two 5,000 4S packs inside. So she's a 4S powered bird. One battery per ESC. Gonna bring it up. And again, all electric, and she is just, she's a beautiful, beautiful OV-10. Everything comes covered. And let's slow her down. But she's got more than enough juice on that, on the 4S power. Which is awesome, it's been a while since I flew this. She is just a gorgeous airframe. Looks really awesome. I've seen a lot of guys with them on, uh, on the forums. Guys have done uh, paint jobs and other coverings on it and such. But I do like the, the OD green, olive drab look to it. Again, gonna bring her in. Let's get a little lower. About half throttle there, right down the runway. And then power up and out. She's got the power to do it. Now let's show you. I am at high rate, but let's roll it. So she will roll. Again, it's an OV-10. Doesn't do anything too fast in that sense. I'm going to bring it in for a big loop. Taking her up. Nice, love it. And we got no wind today. It's a beautiful day. It's been a while since I had flown this, so I was just like, you know, balsas on my mind after flying the big Black Horse Zero. I had only done the Tiger Moth about a month ago from Nexa. So I said, it's time to take this bad boy out again. Now I'm gonna swap directions. So I'm gonna figure eight here, Alex. Then I'm gonna drop to full flap and do a pass, show the gear. I still got three minutes on my timer. I set a six minute timer on this. I just done a five minute flight, came down with 62% in my pack, so, you know, more than enough. So I'm going half, full flat, and then I'll bring the gear out as I come by. No gyro in this or anything like that. And three, two, one, gear. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh no! Is that a gear that fell out? I hope not, but maybe. Did it looked it? a bit large to be your uh, thingy. Oh no, so we're gonna have to figure this out. I think it's a belly landing central, but it's gonna really damage the, the bottom. <laughs> Let me try it again. Yeah, I don't have a gear. I think it fell out. How the f did that happen? Unbelievable. All right. All right. All right. We're going to land this thing. Belly landing on the grass. <clears throat> Full flat. <laughs> You're going skiing! Nice. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh man! Oh, I, think, one of your best I think that was your best landing. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a gear. Dude, it literally <laughs> fell out. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Yeah. I think the strut probably just fell from the reach. I don't think the reach fell. Right <laughs> yeah. That was really big to be an antenna when I saw it fall out after takeoff. Oh, it's just an <laughs> wow. We're here at the aftermath. What happened, James? <laughs> at the aftermath. So, proper pre flight check. I did not. I guess my grub screw loosened on my, uh, on my strut into my retract. And as we were taking off, <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just fell out. And I, from far away, I thought, it was, I thought it was something else on the aircraft, but we were flying around. It wasn't until I checked the gear and realized, uh-oh, I only have two. So um, you got to make do with what you got to make do with. And I will tell you happily, the Nexa OV-10, she belly lands on grass just beautifully. Full flaps and, you know, nice and easy. And these are only like plastic uh, pieces. I assumed they were going to blow out. Um, but they didn't. One little, one little minor crack on the front of one, but overall, I'm impressed. But uh, I'd rather not do that next time. So, got to get my grub screw back in and give it another go. And we're back, guys. Uh, there you have it. She still is in one piece, thank goodness. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. I did not <laughs> expect. Obviously, it's funny, just through the video, we had no idea. But love Victor... Loctite and it's so silly too because with the zero only the week prior I was playing with I loctited everything down um, While I was at the field doing my pre-flights because I had had one of the tires as I was walking it out to do my taxi test um, Got caught up so I, I realized I had never tightened that grub screw when I originally did it So these are the things you learn but this one I you know I did a pre-flight I checked the range and everything at the field did all that but I never bothered to just check those gears so you know, luckily, I guess my maiden, I got lucky. The grub screw was probably still there. And then I never actually, from my maiden, I never put the plane back up on the table. I just swapped the battery, taxied it back out, and did that flight. And, you know, thank goodness. I just thought it was hysterical how it landed. I thought it was going to be a lot worse. I thought I was in for damage. But it ended up, these, like, I guess these bottom pieces, they feel like plastic to me. The uh, the pylons on the bottom, the what are they, spon spon sponsons? sponsons? The sponsons on the bottom. Um, you know, just one of them got a little damage from the weight. Like, it bent a little bit, um, but nothing that I'm ever going to notice. So, either way, I was excited to still have her here. And the funny thing is, now that we've flown it uh, a while back, I do have a spare canopy. So, uh, a spare hold, hold hatch and everything with the canopy. I'm going to take the canopy off, and I think... Alex, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna FPV this. I know, I see Tom Hunt in there. I think, uh, you know, FPV on a big balsa bird is probably gonna be pretty, pretty uh, sick. And I think this one would be really nice for it. So my thought is, since it's got the two seats, uh, do the FPV on a pan and tilt in front, see the cockpit, and then like a GoPro in the back put those servos together. I don't have I don't have the ability to pan into what the goggles we carry yet, but um, I would just put them on rollers and, you know, have them work in unison. So the GoPro sort of sees what the uh, what the FPV camera sees and you obviously you get better footage off a GoPro than recording your FPV camera depending on what camera you use. So I'm just going to try to do this nicely. So either way, I'm excited to still have her in one piece. And I'm going to put this down. She stands on some foam down there. Give her a little bit of a lean. Of course. <laughs> I try to do this live. And it doesn't quite work. I need everybody to watch it fall over in the watch back. Me, right? Watch it fall over in the back. As long as I don't hit it and go backwards, I think we'll be all right. So, yeah, so that was just fun. So we got the actual, so, so we, and what I ended up doing, there's actually two grub screws in those retracts. So I just took one and popped it up and we ended up flying another two times. Alex did some chase. So Monday, we'll have a proper, <laughs> a proper flight and landing on that. But we just thought, there it is. That's going to kick off the show. Because when you produce a live weekly show like this, it's, um, uh, you know, sometimes it's obviously easy on the weeks where we have, you know, we have new things. We have something to unbox. That's easy. Those produce themselves. But it's the weeks where you're, you know, off. And that's the beauty of the show. Because now, going forward, we have so much cool stuff to show uh, for the week uh, that was on social media. So I think we'll get started there. And if I'm not, if I'm correct, Jeremy, you are in the chat, I believe. He just shared this with me about a half hour ago. I said, can I throw it uh, in the show? 
Um, <clears throat> and he said, yes. So take a look at this. He just shared it with me. And apparently in about three hours, Jeremy Salt is going to go out and film this. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. It's really funny. So thank you, Jeremy, for sharing. And uh, here it is. I don't know. Was he talking during this? I actually... uh, it's really low. They okay. still hear you. I was... Uh, I watched it. We had other things going, Jeremy, so I didn't get a chance to hear everything you said, but I'll bring it up. It is a sweet floor, but look at this. <laughs> sweet floor. It was a good reveal. Unbelievable. His tanker with a, with a little F-16 on it. Now, the only thing's missing is get a carbon spar and get five more of those F-16s going in a V behind, like as if they're in formation. Because I assume they must all go one at a time when they do it. That is so funny. I just wonder, is it going to... I mean, what's the CG going to be like? Or the drag on the back of the plane? Like, what are your nerves... Uh, what are you thinking? Or is it just going to blow off? How secure is it on there? That's... Uh, it's really, really funny. So we just threw it in the Hobby Squawk section. He didn't post this to Hobby Squawk yet or anything. But I'm sure he's going to share that out on social. And then follow, you know, Salt Productions. I believe it's Salt Productions, right? So. Yeah, Salt Productions. Share your link. Uh, we'll we'll post it if you drop it in there. But if you're gonna post your video of your flight, maybe you, are you guys gonna go live with this? Because I know Jeremy and Justin they do a lot of live Facebook stuff um, when they do go to their field. So if you guys are gonna go live. I say go live because <laughs> I can't wait to see it. And if anything, eventually you got to get a camera in the back just to get that shot, you know, of of it fueling. But it looks absolutely hysterical. And this is the craziness. If you've never seen this show before or, you know, seen RC, this is what these nutcases do out there. <laughs> this is the type of stuff <laughs> we do. Uh, you know, we get crazy with things. And, you know, that's what makes it so much fun because we're all big kids. Um... FPV in the next. back would be awesome. Uh, where do we want to go next? Well, we're on Hobby Squawk, right? So I got to yeah. look this way. So first things first. Oh, let's show U.S. Canuck. So I have the sports sail. This is the white uh, sailboat. And uh, U.S. Canuck posted in our... We have a whole boat section on Hobby Squawk as well. But I thought this was great because the white one looks like a great platform. So Hootie Contact, but Cali Graphics. After he did his maiden voyage... Uh, and then he added some graphics. He said his wife said it looked like the Lady Blue. And he added, so I, I asked him, I'm not sure if there's stickers on the sails um, or vinyl. I think you'd want to iron on the sails because they're nylon sails. So I don't know if you put a sticker on it, would it affect how it blows in the wind or anything? I think you'd rather something that irons on and is more uh, giving, if you will. But either way, that's what I want to do. That almost looks like the Motion RC boat. I want to do it with our three blues going on the uh, on the sails as well. So that's awesome. David, yourself, speaking of big kid, I just turned a 12-inch action figure into an RC skydiver. That's, that's the point. I got Batman in the background from David <laughs> Snyder that I've got to put in my L39 Batman one. This is what uh, we're talking about. Uh, Brenton, I, you know what? The Venom, I miss flying the Venom, so I'll try to do that video next week. Why not? Uh... I will take uh, the same power system. I don't have the Venom with the high performance in it. I'll just pull that same system out of something else and slap it in there uh, if I got it. Actually, so, oh yeah, the F-18, the, the gray F-18 is high performance. I believe it uses the same 90 millimeter fan. So if I got it, I'll swap it in there and I'll do it. I, I love flying the Venom. That thing's, that thing's so much fun. Sound. Makes the best sound. <laughs> I'm thinking of also I want to take the in-runner 70 millimeters out of a couple planes and put them in the 262. I think that would be sweet as well. But good work, USA Canucks, sharing on Squawk. Next one, we got Tango Vector 1. Which one was this? Oh, so Tango Vector, he posted this, if you guys see in the link in the description. If you want to make sure something definitely gets on the show, please go to that link in our Squawk. We have a thread dedicated to this show. And share whatever you want. And this one was more um, not what what we're looking at, but he like just said, you know, a good idea. We're all play with our planes on the table. And obviously the ESC lead, you turn your plane upside down. And I'm sure we're, we all get into that situation where the battery, you forget Why the battery's in there, something? it falls out. Or, it, you know, you're trying to wrestle on the table. Maybe there's not enough length. But he just said briefly, he solders up, you know, an XC60 to XC90 or an EC5 to EC5, 
whatever it is, and just makes a longer extension lead, and then usually plugs in like a 4S pack just for when he's setting up his models. And uh, it's always a good thing to do. Another option could be just taking a little uh, nickel metal hydride battery or NICAD battery and just powering on your receiver so then you don't bother uh, accidentally being able to hit the throttle and stuff, you know, like throttle cuts. But I thought it was a good idea and I'm glad he shared it, but that's something I should probably do. And it's funny because the OV-10 next to me, that's what George Baker did for me. He soldered me up. Because with these models, to get the ESCs from the the booms into the fuselage, I had to solder up two, uh, we had to solder up two long XT60 to XT60 leads to get in there. So I actually have them. Uh, when I take this apart, I can use them for that purpose. But, you know, just one of those little things that makes, you know, work smarter, not harder. Uh, and I know about you, but I, I've done it a bunch of times. You have the battery just in the hatch. You don't bother Velcroing it down. You go to flip it over because you want to, change a linkage and the battery falls out and you're like ah you know and it's just these little annoyances that we all do to ourselves so thank you tango vector for sharing that as well moving on m shag i don't know if he's here m shag good guy but he did a different loadout on his mig 29 and looks like good picture preparing for takeoff but that's the only picture he shared so i didn't see it in the air but if you share it in that group i will show it as long as it's you know, remotely cool, and the MIG is still very cool. Looks like he's got some ordnance on there. Yeah, that's it. He has ordinance. a different loadout, the yeah. ordnance. He, he, like, 3D printed up some some different ordnance, and then I think he took some of the ones that they had, and he, you know, I wish he'd get more detailed pictures, please, and <laughs> we could happily see them, but it's awesome. Then I really like this one, Gaibo. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago, maybe, we shared some captured birds. So he took the flight line, uh, FW190 you see here and this was his idea for a US captured FW190 ah. legit scheme and uh, he made it happen this is what we love so he shares you know some pictures of his you know in work in progress and then the final version pre decals I love it almost looks like Green Bay Packers <laughs> going there a little, bit, a little sure. bit and then popping it in with the decals on I thought that looks really really cool so uh Gaibo very well done I love seeing that you don't see too many uh you know too many captured if you will birds Strangers so that's awesome uh, got two questions here that I'm going to answer. Mark Parsons, nobody's received their Yas 39 Gripen yet because it still hasn't arrived, but it's still on target for late October and we are nearing or in late October. So it could be any day now, as soon as the container comes in, they start shipping. And then Lucas JB, the MiG-29 has been available for sale for about two months now. Um, they started shipping out. So unless they're out of stock at the moment, which I don't think they are, um, you know, we did sell a lot of those, uh, but they are online, should be for sale now, but I don't know where you're located either. So, you know, remember I'm live, so it's not like I can check these things. I have to go off of the top of my head. So if somebody can check, that would be great. Uh, Mord Horse, TV for the MIG would be appreciated. Uh, yeah, I know. I still haven't gotten that yet either. That we always said that with the MIG one, it was never coming when the MIG released. Um, so as soon as I get it, then that usually means they're right on the way to, uh, when you guys get it because i can't wait to to even get it to see what i'm looking at and get it on my mig but you know there's we just don't have it yet so when it comes it will come and we'll let you know as soon as it does for sure and obviously setup videos and all that stuff so that's awesome uh anything else on here lb oh this was a really cool i saw this Love this was this. in the f18 thread so uh i don't know what scheme I, it's hard to remember when i'm doing this off you know taking the pictures, but LB, great work on this F-18. I love the spade on the top. Um, who had the spade? Is it a real, I mean, I'm assuming it's anything they're doing is a real scheme, unless he just went with with fake, but I believe somebody has it. So he's got the CAG on there, so it's a CAG bird, some formation. This is the, you know, the, the commander, I guess. He'd fly this one, and everything else would look a little different after this bird, but... Uh, that looks really awesome anyway, and it reminds me of that MIG that I hope we get to eventually see where the guy has it's all like dotted, but there's like an FW190 outline on top of the MIG. Like, it's a crazy scheme. We showed it maybe a couple weeks ago, but that's it. Rob Thomas, decals for MIG missiles. Um, Cali graphics is what you were looking for. 
you know, call her. She'll get you all the uh, the decals. That's where you get the best decals, you know, or you print them yourself or paint them up. But we don't have decals for the missiles on the MiG available from, from us, if you will. Then we got Delta Dart. Michael Rosnick, he's the heli extraordinary. He actually works on helis in real life. We've, I've met up with him a bunch of times, but he's got his 222, his Bell 222 out, and uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. And he always gets great pictures. Obviously, he's not uh, taking pictures and flying at the same time. <laughs> I hope not, but maybe let somebody else fly them. But he always produces some stunning photos. And these Roban helis, every time you see them in a photo like this, they just looks look real. real. It, it like looks real. It looks real. Like I, I don't know too many planes that look like that. Uh, in pictures just at the angles we you know we shoot from then like that like that could be anywhere you know <laughs> coast going to save people tom thanks for stopping by brother and uh no problem if you miss it you can always watch the replay later john yeah 222 is a cool looking heli i mean for sure with the mercy air scheme i like blue i'm a i'm I'm a sucker for anything in blue, especially so you're a Giants fan blue. After I'm, last night. I'm a, I'm still a Giants <laughs> fan after last night, but uh, that's just what happens to us. It's awful. Yeah, I stayed up too late to watch that one, uh, but that's the end of that. <laughs> no more talking about football. So that'll do it for Squawk. I say we move on to some of the happenings on Facebook. So if you're just joining us, guys, we do have a customer community. It is loosely connected to Motion RC. I mean, I run the group, but. You know, guys go in there and they post customer service questions. Our customer service guys do not patrol the Facebook group. It was started as Fan Media was its original name, but then I just call it the Custer Community. And it's just a place where, you know, we hope people go in there and share stuff they got from us, you know. And I let some other things slide from time to time, but, you know, people can say whatever they want in it. It's just more for fun. But we love to be able to use that then to show all you guys. Uh, we love that everybody posts on there. So one that came through was Xavier... Taratus Casanovas. Nice. Did you guys see this? Uh, he's got a crazy looking field up on a hill with some trees there. And I guess he was coming in for his approach. And I've done this before <laughs> where you think you're in front of the trees and you're not. If you see his Bayhawk, <laughs> his free wing Bayhawk. That picture is super misleading. It looks like it's in a bush. It looks like it's in a bush, but it must be such a steep drop. Like it's like, from what he said, I think it's like a 40, 50 foot tree. They had to climb up in there and Somebody had a drone to take an aerial shot of, I guess, him or somebody who climbed up there and, uh, you know, went to go get it. So that's awesome. And I see Ken Sprouse, Brendan McCormick. Yeah, check out Just Plain Crazy. I, I got to call Brendan. I would love to have him on this show um, to not only promote his channel, but he's a full of information. He's the one we shared a while ago. He, he repaired an FMS Bayhawk on his channel, and you couldn't tell that it wasn't brand new. Uh, he nosed it in, I guess, at some point, and then completely fixed it up. It looks absolutely fantastic. But either way, thank you so much, Xavier. As much as we love the, uh, you know, the uh, the good flying videos and the good stuff, also comes with the bad. we love to see this stuff too, because it's just, it's just part of it, and it lets you know you're not alone when you do it yourself. Uh, next one, Timmy Teuton. So if you guys, uh, if you know Tim, he stops by the show sometimes, but he's a good guy. He used the RC Geek. Um, RC Geek has a, a device, I'm forgetting. It's a randomizer. So you put it on any servo and it'll make random movements. So perfect for this application. He's got it in a, uh, I don't know if this is the MIG cockpit. I don't know which cockpit this is, what he's working on. Um, but obviously cut the head on his guy, put it on a servo or whatever, and then got to manipulating it. And this thing will just, and apparently with the randomizer, you could set all different um, speeds and such and directions. I think it would be even funnier if you put this on your rudder <laughs> and oh try to God. fly <laughs> and just try to make corrections. So if somebody wants to take the randomizer and put it on a control surface and have some fun, I would love to see that. <laughs> that would be a lot more fun. But either way, I love the uh, I love when people do stuff like this. And actually, should we go to Gary Willett? So this leads to uh, uh, picture or video. Gary Willett, picture first, I believe. So Gary Willett, new member of our group. Oh, that's one on top of the other. We we'll get to we'll get to Paul in a bit. Uh, Gary Willett 
So he posted this picture. Gary just joined our group. And, uh, you know, he's like, I love free wing servos. But Gary doesn't do RC, I don't believe, in, a, in the way we do it. He uses them. He makes, just as a hobby, he makes animatronics and such. So he had posted a few videos, and I just sort of compiled them a little bit and sped them up. Um, but check this out. It almost looks like he makes Gizmo from Gremlins. If anybody ever remembers the movie Gremlins, this is what this reminds me of. But he uses a bunch of free wing servos uh, for just a completely different... Uh, application i think he's got a futaba servo like i don't know how you would even connect this Whoa. and control it but yeah i end up speeding it up but when you see it moving it it's crazy here we go this is where it starts moving but eyes mouth ears this is absolutely insane it's terrifying <laughs> I would not want to wake up and happen to see that there and forget I put it there. Don't bring your kids to Gary's but front yard on this, Halloween. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Gary's front yard on Halloween is probably absolutely insane. But that looks fantastic. I, I just love the, you know, the idea. You don't think, because I've, I've seen people, I've had people obviously doing marketing. I get asked, hey, we do battle bots or, you know my club and we've helped with things like that in the past where you know people use our servos and such for those applications but um it's very rare you get to actually see it and then he's like an alpha he shared like him designing it and then look at this thing Whoa. i mean it's <laughs> Whoa. it's crazy but you can see he's got like the futaba receiver there so he must have a transmitter of some sort but it looks like it's just connected through s bus so i guess he's got it probably on a computer maybe that sets all the motions that's how i assume they do it at disney when you're in pirates of the caribbean it's probably all connected to computers all those animatronics and they just all move in a pattern but uh either way really cool gary for sharing that as a first post way to enter the facebook group is fantastic let's go to jeremy salt we'll end with paul um, Paul's more of a somber post, um, but Jeremy Seltzer, we saw earlier, we didn't, I didn't know I was going to get that KC-135 video, but him and Jeremy Lamb, they get some stunning pictures, and these pictures popped up of a MIG and the Tomcat, the free wing, twin 80 bad boys, um, and they just look awesome. With that sunset, like they said, they're getting, I, I, we, I would love to fly out there. I couldn't even imagine uh, flying with skies like that and just the openness, you know, around here, it's too many trees around. Like you don't get the openness of the earth <laughs> like that. And, uh, I remember a long time ago, we'd gone out to New Mexico and Alex and I for a different type of event. And, uh, you know, it's stunning views back there when you see the mountains and all that stuff. So I would love to get out there and fly one day, but the two of them, they always get so close and they always do such cool stuff. Like, obviously, they don't just fly for fun as much as they also fly for a purpose every time, you know? They go up, and they there's obviously planning, and they just, uh, you know, they obviously work well together. So good on them. Thanks for sharing those, and check out both their channels, 410 Productions, Salt Productions. Um, you know, give them follows, give them likes, and then they always go live on Facebook. So definitely check those guys out. Then we have Matt Miller. He uh, he posted he's working on the Nexa. This is the Nexa P47. And he said it was like me a while back. This was his first uh, foray into Balsa ARFs. He was scared. He made posts that he was nervous about it. But then he said, once you start, like I slowly figured out, once you get started, it's fun and it's pretty easy. It's just more time than it is uh, anything else. So Matt, when you do eventually finish this bird off, we can't wait to see it. And I hope you post some of your flight video. Then we had Josh, Josh Pote, Josh Pote, got an AL-37. It's funny, I never, it's rare to see an AL-37 with the motion scheme on it. I love it. I have one hanging up right behind the TV that I look at with all the comments. And uh, I haven't had her out myself in a while. It's just, you know, these things don't need me to fly it anymore. People love them. But uh, either way, I love seeing it. He's excited about it. And you should be. You forget how big it is till you see somebody standing next to it, you know? And uh, I love that he went with the Motion RC Airlines. I love the livery we popped on it. Uh, it was the first plane that ever had our logo on it, I believe. So, you know, it's like the uh, mascot, if you will, for Motion RC. And then before we get to the last one, Barry Caravan. Is it Caravan? Canavan. Canavan. Barry Canavan with an OV-10 from Flightline. <clears throat> Another one that now that I flew the Nexa one out, 
this one looks good. This one would fly well with mine. I have a custom one just like it uh, with the white top. I love the white wing on an OV-10. I think that always stands out uh, really nice. Too. And another spade. So that might be from the same uh, squadron. Could it be? Well, no, this is Marines. <laughs> I know about that. <laughs> well, this is Marines. The other one wouldn't have been a Marine. Now I'm forgetting if the other one was Marines or Air Force or Navy. No, F-18 would have been Navy, probably. So it was a Navy and then a Marines. Just sharing the spade, I guess, if you will. But... Either way, looks great, and he did the same thing I did with the props, uh, put the red the red lines through, so he did uh, an awesome job. Now see that, if I had that ordinance on this Nexa bird, I would have had a lot of problems. I would have blew all that ordinance right off, would have banged props, like, it. if, you, <laughs> if you're not going to properly pre-flight check your planes, don't put ordinance on it, is, is what we learned today at uh, the Motion RC live show. So that was good. And then lastly, I want to share this. Paul West, um, he posted a couple months back that he had lost his father, um, you know, in our community. And the two of them shared RC together. Uh, so his dad, one of his favorite planes was the F-4. He loved flying the F-4. So Paul, um, actually, I forgot to grab the other pictures, but Paul did his first and last flight on this one uh, to honor his father. So just touching. Uh, he always pops in there, and I love that he sort of, you know, leaned on the RC community a bit. Everybody gets in their down moments, and it's good to have a hobby like this for these reasons. You know, we, we, we see it pop up in our community at times. People all have some sort of loss, and I'm sure his father was out there with him while he was flying this around, but he does one flight on it, and then he just recently, I think it was this morning in Facebook customer community, he posted, he has that F4 now, up on the wall, retired. He's never gonna fly it again. Um, I think he should pull the power system out though, and still fly the power system, but his father like customized the bird, and he did a great flight on it. And I uh, just wanna say, Paul, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, my heart goes out to you. Everybody's heart goes out to you in this community, because. We've all been there in some way, shape, or form, and uh, that's the beauty, man. The best thing you can do sometimes is just do the things that clear your head, and I'm sure flying uh, is something that, you know, I know it does for me. It's very relaxing and, you know, good on you. Paul's out in England as well, by the way, as I think Les and some of the other guys up there, but either way, man, we're with you, and, uh, you know, thanks for sharing that. You don't have to do that, but, you know, anything you need, man, Paul. That was, uh, thank you so much. That's why, that's why we love this hobby in general. So thank you so much for sharing that. You know, the fact that we even take part in that in some, uh, you know, little way, you know, off, off base way. Uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. So that'll do it for Facebook. And then let's go out to YouTube. Got a couple things to show on YouTube. Want to call out Air Guardian first. Yeah. Uh, oh, dude, who'd you throw up? Right back into Steve. Oh, you so went, we oh, okay, this. so let's talk about this. So <laughs> Alex, me and Alex went right to that, no way in heck is this fake. No way. And the reason the being is the amount of work. Amount of work. Like, we rendered out, we've done CGI type things. But when I posted this, so many people were like, oh, it's Photoshopped. I was like, well, A, how are you using the word Photoshop? Photoshop is a image picture program. image program. Photoshop has nothing to do with video. So unless you're using it as a verb, like a Polaroid, can you block Gene Falter here? I don't know why he keeps saying hi, but hello and... Gene, you're in timeout. And you're in timeout. <laughs> or boot him. Just boot him. <laughs> like, can you just... Can, do you have a boot button? I'm like, whoop, no time. Nobody got time for that. Um, but if you watch, the hardest thing to CGI, and if you watch any videos of... Um, you know, like, I, I go right to, like, Disney. Like, when they make Thanos or when they make, you know, this CGI. Shadows. Yep. Shadows. Like, the editing rig, you would need a $10,000 computer just to do shadows in render. And when you watch this plane go... Uh, the shadows are consistent. The shadows are absolutely consistent with where the sun is at all times. There are times the sun duck, ducks behind a mountain, and it's there. Then I saw the other concern where Spencer was, I don't see the ailerons move. Well... A, ailerons wouldn't move that far, but also, people aren't thinking 360-wise. So this is filmed with an Insta360. It's a camera I would love to get. It's almost a $1,000 camera, small handheld, 360-degree view. So remember, when you film this, in the editing room, you are, he also has footage of what it looks like behind, depending on how he mounted this, behind this model, to the sides, 
he could have uploaded this video where it's VR. If you ever see those VR videos where you could hold your phone and you can move around and see, like if I had a 360 camera in front of me on the table, uh, you know, you guys would be able to, in essence, look behind the camera and see what I'm looking at behind you at your own leisure. But then in the editing studio, he's manipulating. The only thing he's doing is editing the camera, like right there when it's zoomed back out. So when he filmed it, this is probably exactly how it looks when he brings it in. He just zoomed it in for majority of the video where the wingtips are. Like that, he just rolled the camera in the edit. That was not, a, the plane didn't roll, obviously. So that was just an editing feature. Like, there you, go. you see him pan the camera. Yeah, this, this is all him just in the editing room. And, he, and he's doing it to the beat of his song. I couldn't play the music. It would, you know, the music wouldn't work on our channel. But, you know, he has it all edited up. And I guess the hardest thing for me is going downhill. Like, where is he standing? I have no idea. Yeah, that's what blows my mind is where I, is he? I'd assume he'd have to be up above the, um, you know, up on the mountain looking down to keep up to maintain a signal. But the entire video, he's going downhill for almost the entirety of it. So I'm sure he actually used minimal you know minimal battery like look at if the you will flicker when the sun hits the yeah. trees on the left here like that would take so long like to even to do the cgi just look at the lens like there's obviously <laughs> gunk on his lens like you're not going to cgi that in like you know that that's this is really attached to this aircraft and you know if i was going to cgi an aircraft i wouldn't have it all banged up in the back either if i was going to go hard but like this is him just manipulating the camera in the post edit that's all and you do see the ailerons move. He drops flaps, but the ailerons for he's majority of this video, like the ailerons wouldn't move that much for a small bank going at this speed. Also, it's like with that big uh, landscape, uh, his speed looks slower than it probably really is. Also, you know, if you were going closer, it would it would go. But either way, if it's fake, get this guy yeah, a job. Yeah, if Hollywood. it's fake, he should be working in Hollywood. <laughs> and for a channel that's eight years old that had three hundred seventy subscribers in eight years to all of a sudden come out with with this and you know photoshop but you know or or editing like that would be impossible and then the only other way i remember uh, a long time if you guys watch uh, rotor riot um they had linked up with a production company where a bunch of their drone pilots flew around buildings and through trees and they wanted to make a star wars video so they threw some gopros on there and then, um, I guess, come back to me for a second. <clears throat> um, so what he did was, uh, so they've had the drones fly around just by themselves, just whipping by trees. So think, think Star Wars when they, you know, when they're going in through trees or whatever, TIE fighters. But then what they did production-wise, so they jerry-rigged a cockpit. They used the same camera and the guy jerry-rigged a contraption. And then he went up to the roof and had a TV screen where he was watching one of the chase videos. He held it up to the sun and he was trying to move the camera around and record so that the cockpit would get the same shadows that would then match the video and they overlaid it over. And the work it took to do that, like they show a whole behind the scenes, it was like five years ago, um, of how they did it for what, what ended up being like a two minute video. You know, like a, it was like an insane amount of work. So either way, Stu911, I have no doubt that you had an Insta360 on your free wing Venom and you rode down a mountain like a champ. Either way, I want to do that. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. That was the, when I woke up Monday morning, that was the first thing I saw in my email box and I took the five minutes to sit there and just enjoy that. You immediately sent it to <laughs> And I immediately sent it to Alex. I'm like... Out. We need this camera. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alpha. Thing I said to you was, we need that camera. Get me the camera, because it's fan. I would love to just see Joe. Not like I would want to put it up on a plane and then just allow you to move it around. And I've shared some videos on there. There's a couple guys I know. The Wright Brothers RC W R I G H T Bros. He has one and um, <clears throat> with a 360 cam, and that's what he does. He he flies up in gaggles, and then in the post edit. He will manipulate the camera to let you look at what he wants to see. But then sometimes he just uploads the, uploads them as a VR. So if you did have a VR goggle set and you were watching YouTube VR, you look left, you'll see the wingtip. You look right, you'll see the wingtip. You could turn around, you'd see back there. And so on and so forth. So 
that's the future i'm sure you know prices are going to come down on these 360 cameras but the insta 360 for its size it's about a coffee cup size i believe and uh you know it's almost a thousand bucks but either way it looks to be you know the uh the tops if you will of dg of uh you know 360 cameras in small small sizes but either way that looks awesome so good on Stu. that was so fun to see then uh rc tommy let's go to rc tommy jan berg is he here jan's always in and out of our live show but excellent pilot jan and this channel man they take some of the crispest footage you'll ever see uh where they're located in europe and uh this is just about a minute of jan flying around the avanti and you know just killing it with the avanti the avanti is one of those planes Take but <laughs> you know he's he's obviously you know jan always loves to comment he's got a lot of opinions that jan but we always love seeing them because he's chock full of information and uh you know solid but i just love how sharp whoever's filming this and whatever camera they got you know really captures it i mean keeps it in perfect focus and you know just awesome so Definitely check out the full flight on RC Tommy's channel because they got some good pilots there and they do a lot of fun stuff too. Like if you just want to see beautiful flying, you you know, that's a perfect channel to go check it out. Oh. Now, oh, he's back. Answer me. For what? What did he ask? Did he ask something? No, no he didn't. Um, all right, moving on to lastly then, our Air Guardian. I don't think I saw Air Garden. He's usually in here too. Another one, but I shared this because I thought it was funny. You know, he's a great pilot as well. He's always posting videos of his SU, of his F-18. Um, but I shared this one just because, you know, he even shares when he has an accident. You know, we're not all perfect, um, you know, obviously. So it's better when we show it. So I love that. Can you boot him? You got, just get him out. Over. <laughs> like, I don't know why I keep seeing that. Like, I, I unbelievable. Ah. If you think he's real, oh, he's still there. <laughs> You're just deleting it. Is there a right click and and block? <laughs> you can't do it? I think he's coming in with different accounts at this point. <laughs> wow, that would be incredible. Either way. Air Guardian... Thank you so much for sharing. Does he get, did we get to the, uh, here we go, his landing, because he slows it up and such, but this is what happens. So he realized it too late. You hit the, uh, you know, you hit the throttle at the wrong time, and this is what's going to happen to your jet. But he said he fixed it up, and he's all good, and, uh, you know, either way, Air Guardian's a good guy, and, you know, I just like the fact that you know show your crashes show you know where you make mistakes because that's how other people learn you know at that point he should have just i would have just went with it um you know just taken the landing it might have been a little harder but she probably would have glided home but uh you know everything in that speed happens so fast right like when you're flying like everything happens so fast and there's a lot of shoulda woulda coulda uh stuff but either way you know air guardian good guy Thank you so much for sharing that. So now that does it for our tour of the community. And now let's show you some progress that we made on the P47. So last week we unboxed it. Um, we're going to have a product page up as soon, uh, soon as I can. Um, but again, it's not coming till probably November-ish time when we do get our restock of a lot of the bigger Black Horse models. But I just worked this week again. If I, if I had all day to just do this, it probably would have been done by now. But... Uh, there were some differences. I, so I just built up one wing and I have it plugged in for some of the things I'm doing, but it's absolutely gorgeous. We'll start with it upside down. So I just put some foam on here. This is the oh, Benchcraft. We don't have a picture. This is a new Benchcraft foam stand available. I dig it. All foam. So not I like noisy. not I noisy, like it, not yeah. noisy like the, you know, I got the Robart one, but it's that styrofoam is like. Oh, this is like squishy foam, you know, one of the ones that you're not going to manipulate, but it's not going to hurt your plane at all. So I really dig it. Um, but we could start here. So this one, unlike the zero, you're getting bombs, you know, on the, on the side. It does have a centerline tank uh, that'll be there, but I did the gear. 
we did servos i got high tech i did i have i had 625s in there so that's what i went with uh metal gear the other zero has 645 so those are more torque this is more speed i think they're gonna be fine uh, you know it's a warbird i don't think i need too much you know it's not like i'm whipping it around <laughs> like a 3d model but it looks i loved just the way just off the bat you know the way they lined everything up i mean this is pretty darn close to have it painted like this so it's two panels going over your gear this was different than the zero so this is just where and at first i didn't have a manual so this was a sample sent to me about two and a half months ago the the show that i unboxed the p40 and the zero together i also had this box was sent and it's been it was hiding back there because alf was just like you know that's something coming later don't worry about it um <clears throat> But now it's it's almost here, so it was time to start worrying about it. But either way, so again, open up didn't have a manual in there. You know, this was just probably the first one they built and sent to me. So, you know, I was just going by what I knew from building the zero. So easy with the uh, the flask. But let's get it plugged in quick. So I just have it plugged up here to a random ESC just to have it you know on. And I'm going with redundancy throughout. But First things first, let's power on our transmitter. Let me plug in my battery. And this was out of a crashed F4 from back in the day. Yeah, see? But now, so now we're on. So I got, let me, up. Oh, we got our aileron going. Looking good. I like this too because you could sort of get it centered up and get it ready to go. So uh, you could really, you know, really get it going well. Then we've got flaps, so I'm digging that. And so this is all epoxy, and I'm gonna make some quick tip videos on this because it's it's hard to do a full build video for a Balsa ARF because you're doing, um, you know, because you're just, it just there's time, you know, there's time to do it. But I think for just these pinned hinges, pretty simple process. I just use 30 minute epoxy. I get the epoxy on four, well, first I dry fit it, when I like the dry fit, I take a pencil and I mark off uh, each each bit of how far they're in to get it to function the way it goes. Then I do epoxy. I epoxy it into usually one side first. And then while it's in one side, I put the epoxy on the other end, put it in, and then I use like isopropyl alcohol and just wipe away any excess all around. And one thing I found with this, if you get a little epoxy that you miss, um, with the isopropyl alcohol, it actually peels off this covering. I don't know if that would be the same on some of the uh, other balsa models. Like this is a different type of coating. This I believe is Aura cover. This is not, I thought it was. This is like, it's almost like a vinyl, um, these newer Black Horse models. It's something different entirely than what I've seen on the uh, Tiger Moth and what I've seen on the, um, you know, what I've seen on the, uh, the OV-10. So, you know, it's stunning, but either way, what I do like is <laughs> epoxy just peels right off of it uh, with a little isopropyl alcohol, which is awesome. So that works well. So then now the gear, now with the gear on these Black Horse models, you're using, they come supplied. Again, you get electric retracts, you get the strut, you get everything, and you get the controller. So like I did on the Zero, I went, I went for redundancy. So I have a separate battery just for this uh, mechanism. And here again, if I had sequence gears doors, you could put those on. You could do brakes if you had air brakes, if you had a need for it. But it's just one lead out into your gear channel. And then right now I just have it coming from the plane to there. So I'm going to plug in. And what I like, you do have a test button. So if you leave this in and plugged in, like I could just drop the gear without having to replug in a battery or anything, which I really love. Um, or, you know, we could just go to, let's see if it's, I had it on this channel, I believe. Do I have it on this channel? I forget which channel I put it on. Hold on. Oh, there it is. I put it on. I was just messing around in there with the other channels. But there we go. So check that out. I love the the doors. And I'm going to have to... Now I have to manipulate it a little bit now that <laughs> it's in there. But either way, it's two part doors. There's a, there's a set screw. So I'm going to be able to if that it was fine i thought it was and then you know bringing it back up but either way so that's bending a bit but again these are the things we play with with a balsa arf but i do love like the double dual like covers so the zero didn't have any of this so i was really uh you know excited about that which which one did i say it was? oh it's g there it is 
but then they go down together. So there's ball links. It was totally different than the zero one. So when I saw it without a manual, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm like looking at pictures, trying to figure out how be best to get that to work. And I had no, no idea. So either way, is that my, and then your servos jitter sometimes. So then this is just screws, screws in. I got guns. And then lastly, so this is where I'm going to modify. So uh, the Zero, they come with these covers, um, you know, fake lights, if you will, on the side. But I decided to go with real lights. And a while back, I had gotten this in. We sell it. It's a ZOHD uh, dusk lighting system. So I, they had sent me a sample before it came on the website. And... Uh, I didn't know what to do with it, but I felt like, oh, this is the perfect time. So what you get in this set, um, you get this little controller where you got five ports. So you got navigation lights, NL left, NL right, tail, and then landing lights, left and right. They give you five lights. One's green, one's red, and three are white. And then you plug in a battery. So I, I found a small little, it says anywhere from 7 to 24 volt. And then you can plug into your receiver. And if you set it to a three position switch, you could have all lights off, just nav light in the middle, or nav light and all lights going uh, at the other part. So I was like, this is the perfect time to use it. And they do give you a pretty, for most applications, let me open one here. They give you a lot of length on the. Uh, you know, on the lights to the lights. But for this application, I had to solder. I cut this in half. That's a pretty long lead that they give you. It's going to fit most free wing and flight line aircrafts, I think, perfectly. But this, it was not going to fit. So I just chopped it in the middle, soldered in some, you know, some regular wire between, and then routed it all the way out to the end. And let me plug in the power. Make sure I don't do it backwards. Because we're live. <laughs> we know how it goes. Oh my god, he's back on another account. There we go. And we got red navigation on what should be my left wing. And I'm pumped about it. Uh, I think it'll look good with lights. But it makes me want to, um, you know, it makes me want to, uh, what's it called? If you guys ever saw it, I should have shared a picture, but the P-47... Obviously, there's a couple of lights. I do think they have one in the rudder, which I don't think I'm going to do because you'd have to go through the rudder. And, you know, if that ever messed up, I don't know how you'd ever fix it. Um, so I wasn't going to do taillight. It's just since I have this pack, I'm obviously going to put the green one in the exact location on the other wing. But on the other wing, on your right side, if you will, uh, the P-47 has those three lights. Uh, it's an amber, a, a white, and a green light just in you know stacked on top one two three going down the wing so i think i'm gonna do it i think since i have those three landing lights uh and they're all white what i'm gonna get are like what'd you say the gels gels like gels um i'll buy an amber one a green one and then a clear one and just run the three lights right through out the other side of the wing and then you know attach that and then the beauty of this flying it you know i'd love to then take it out when the sun's about to go down, you know, for those sunsets, or even the, I just think immediately, Jonal, 5 a.m., get out there for the, uh, for the morning, you know, what do they call Dawn it? Patrol. Dawn Patrol, and, uh, you know, it would look good. So that's probably going to be my non-scale contribution to, uh, to this. So the ID lights, Chris, thank you. But I'm just mean the, the, I'm going to buy like plastic sheets that, I think of them like I was selling. I was like, "What are the you know those plastic sheets that your teacher used to draw on with the projector <laughs> onto the wall? Like those? They sell them in different colors. So I'll cut little circles from that and uh, put it in there. So that's about uh, that's the progress I made. So now hopefully we don't aren't as busy next week. But I'm just gonna I should be able to knock out the other wing. As I said, I'm gonna do a couple of first couple little things. Like I do want to do a video that shows you how this works because this is a it's very simple but we did have people who bought black horse models uh when they first came out and this was sort of new to some of the bigger ones that came and they didn't know how to do it and i hadn't gotten to that point on my zero yet so i couldn't even help answer the questions but you know we'll do a video on how to set that up i'll probably do a video on that as well and then on just some of the little things that i'm learning you know like i watched videos on how to you know how to properly do the hinges. And the one thing too is Vaseline. 
comes in handy. So I take a big glob of Vaseline and put it on the joint first before I ever do anything with the epoxy because the last thing you want is epoxy getting into those joints after you've, you know, after you've powered them in. So that's it. But now let's get to some questions quick about this. Um, what power system? So Mickey, I'm going to go electric again with this same motor I used on the zero, but this time I, I'm going to go 12 S why not? You know, even though the zero is plenty <laughs> powerful on 10 S, but I want to see it. And then my thought process is it's very easy to take the electric stuff out and then go gas. Cause that's where we're going in a second. Um, with the show when we get to new products, um, I definitely will get the P47 and the Zero on gas. And I just spoke with Jason Miller. He's like the pre he was he was the president of the club that we fly at. I spoke to him yesterday. The Spitfire's been ready, but he almost has the P40 <laughs> ready. We just haven't got out and met. Like the Spitfire's ready to go. But he's got those two on gas. So we're gonna we also have access to an, a real airport. So we're gonna meet up. I wanna get this one done, and then we're gonna have the Zero, the P47, the Spitfire and the uh, P40 all together, two on gas, two on electric, fly them. And then after I get what I need out of the electric stuff, um, you could always swap and upgrade. You know, I definitely, I think next year, 2021 is probably going to be the year where I learn uh, myself how to, how to break in an engine and how to fly. You know, that's something like I had never done a Balsa AR kit till last year, Balsa ARF, like built it myself and flew it. And now you know, I'm there and this is like that progression. So, you know, I'd be happy to do it. Part of me in my head, I see guys at the field messing around with it. It looks a lot. It's electric is just so easy. I, I don't, you know, right now I prefer electric. I like it. It's quiet. Um, it's powerful. It's simple. You just charge a pack, you're back up in two seconds. You know, it's, there's a lot of work that goes into a gas engine, but I don't knock people to do it. They're awesome to, you know, to see, to fly. And it's something that I definitely want to do because now on new products, check this new motor out. Alpha wanted me to definitely show it. We just added this to the website. Any of you guys who do fly gas, let me know right now in the comments what you think of this. So this the, the, G, the NGH GF60, it's, uh, it's like a linear uh, motor. So they have a whole description. Um, it just came up, but you know the price on it is substantial. It is a solid motor, but this is a 60cc, uh, I believe two stroke, uh, inline they call it. And you know, I don't know the difference between this and per se a regular engine, but from what, you know, from what our description reads at Alpha Red um, <clears throat> is, you know, you're getting crazy efficiency out of it. And um, you know, unbelievable. Do I have it written in there? Oh, the website. There it is. Oh, four stroke. Sorry, guys. Four stroke. Um, it is. But but check it out and read through the description. That just popped up. So I believe we have other other ones. But like, that's the type of engine that could go, you know, in the zero. Um, so who knows? Maybe I'll get there and throw something like that in it. But <laughs> or you're going even bigger. But. It looks fantastic. I mean, we're, you know, we're getting big boy toys too, uh, which is, which is awesome. And then that leads us to, if you guys haven't seen, um, we also, you know, we added the NGH motors when we first added Black Horse, I believe, but now we also got some Admiral motors in the two stroke section, um, coming from us. So here's some pictures of our Admiral motors. So this is our, we have a 60 CC one and a 125 CC uh motor so you know if you guys are into that these i may put one of these first um on it like something like that i believe that's the 60 cc one so i'd probably throw that on uh you know on the zero or something when i first go to do it and then uh you know and then work from there you know i'd be excited to learn again like i said it's just you know one of those things that you can only be so <laughs> i gotta be a sailor i gotta be a you know a pilot and now i gotta be an engineer work on motors it's you know there's just only so much time in a day to do this so double the torque of a single so you can swing a much larger prop oh that's what i am going to do though guys uh if you remember my my prop thing with the uh with the zero i went with the 22 by 12 electric prop and then i went to the wood wood electric um on the zero but for the P47, you know, this this doesn't this kit obviously doesn't come with a spinner um, or anything. So you need to buy a prop nut. And I found I think I'm going to go 
with a 20 by 12 four bladed propeller i want the four blade for the p47 and uh i think it should work out perfectly because i think when you if, is the i i believe the saying is two blade cut an inch for each blade you you add so you know so if i was so the recommendation on my motor and what i'm going with is a 22 12 two blade so a three blade would be 21 12 and a four blade would be 20 2012 so i think that would be perfect um for this application because I, I i think it would be sad to not have a four bladed propeller on on this gorgeous p47 oh and then one thing i didn't show last week too you guys saw the cowl last week but uh the cowl did come with these for the cowl so ready for takeoff am i on the p47 she was up there and i forgot to grab her when that went so they give you a decal for the cowl to um you know to make it work if if you will then lastly guys new products remember last week we added um by the time the show started we had added eight new nexa balsa arfs um but check it out we did add three more later that day so if you hadn't seen it um you know if you hadn't seen them i believe it was the g3 let me sort by new there we got the hellcat in we got a t34 mentor and that G36. So if you guys hadn't seen those two, so that's like 11, 11 new models, you know, all came in last week. So really excited about that. I, I still think the Dauntless is the one that I'm most excited about in this batch. And then in the the first batch, I still want the twin Mustang. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've been following that thread of people building them and, you know, the twin Mustang is, uh, is just kooky enough for me, but something about that Dauntless look good. But the Mentor looks cool, definitely at 61 inch, so that's right, you know, in the flight line size of a single, you know, Warbird, and then similar on the uh, 70 inch on this Sport one, which looks really cool as well. You know, I like the way that that one looks as well, the G36. But yeah, John VHRC, the twin Mustang, I think, to do that balsa, I would, I would like that to be my next balsa project after this P47 finishes. But we'll see. They're they're a good seller right now. I think a lot of people are like me in the sense of they want something different, you know, sometimes. But uh, either way, they look good. And, uh, you know, that is fantastic. The lightning is delicious, Lars says. But either way, that's where we are at with our, let me shut down the Futaba here. Everything is shut. Do I have anything plugged in still? No, we are good. It's the last thing I need. And I gotta, luckily I didn't bump that. Usually with my luck, I would I've been watching it the whole time. Bump it, it's gonna fall behind me. But either way, oh, lastly, I, I do wanna show this before we get out of here. So we unbox the vet and we are gonna, you know, we are gonna have some fun. But, what I didn't realize uh, last week when I showed these these little guys off, so these are those Kyosho um, 127th scale uh, cars. The vet comes with lighting in it, and it looks awesome. So we're gonna go to the garage with some white tape, and we're gonna make like a track. Is this the right transmitter? Can I put it on? Oh, I didn't turn it on. Oh, there we go. All right, it's on, but she is lit up. So let me shut off the lights here a sec. Can you see the lights? Oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's hot. But you even got rear lights, so when I back up, they brighten up. I love it. Here, wait, wait, back up. There we go. Reverse, forward. And then you can, uh, you know, on the uh, control, you could change the lights. So you can make them, there's like a, an extra channel on the transmitter that they come with. But I'm so excited to drive this around. Going lights back on. Going lights light. But that's really awesome. And it's a whole package. And then from what I'm reading about these two, and I'm sure we're going to get them eventually, but there's like gyros you can add to them and stuff. Like they are, uh, you know, they are like real deal for their size. I mean, they look so, you know, they look cute. But they are so detailed, and you know, me and Alex are gonna drive these around, do some racing. Um, <laughs> these are, these are fun. Oh, there you go, Justin Link. Tons of hop-up parts are available. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna get them all as well. But I'm driving the ZR1. I want the American Muscle. You can drive the Audi, and uh, you know, whatever that thing is, it's cool looking, I guess. 
<laughs> but no, they're all awesome. But guys, yeah, show John's posts. Everyone could come to his channel, watch his new MIG video. That'll do it for me. I'm probably over, yeah, 10 minutes over today, but we got a lot to talk about. It was a fun uh, show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Next week, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Uh, we're definitely going to get out with some boats. I got to do that as well. Um, we'll have hopefully more progress. I want to at least get the other wing done and then get to work on that fuselage because okay. I hope to be flying be this in about... Halloween episode. we got to do something. Halloween <laughs> episode. Man, what... You know, stay around on the minute. What's it... What do we... You know, what do you do for Halloween with this hobby? <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I'm i not... Well, if you ask the you know? old versions of ourselves, we put on some costumes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make a drone look like a ghost. We did, yeah, <laughs> we did Ghostbusters for Halloween. I dressed like Hulk Hogan in an old Halloween RC McFly YouTube video. For one year. You were Marty McFly for one year. Dr. Oh, man, we didn't even <laughs> think about it. We didn't even think about it. There's no time to produce something like that. But uh, maybe I'll just carve a motion pumpkin for you guys just to, you know in the spirit but who knows with this COVID thing if my kids can even do we don't even know what they're going to do around our area as far as uh you know trick-or-treating and such but we'll get there either way guys thank you so much for joining us as always hit the like button on your way out the door i still see 144 here 45 on the likes um you know likes always help let people see it and uh let me know guys definitely check the link in that hobby squawk head to hobby squawk if you're not a member and you want to talk to the show we got whole threads with, uh, you know, if you have ideas for the show, if you want to share your own stuff, um, you know, I'll happily share it on the show. The show is for you guys just as much as it's for us to show you, uh, you know, the things we have going on here at Motion RC. But either way, guys, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank Alex for his tremendous behind-the-scenes production uh, capability. And we'll see you next week for episode 42 of Motion RC Live. Later, guys. Later, guys.